This is my long-term test bike that I'll be testing over the next year, and it is the Giant TCR Advanced Pro 2 Disc. The TCR is Giant's classic all-round road race bike, and it's seen a fairly major update for 2021. The Advanced Pro range sits just below the top-end Advanced SL range, and it uses a very similar frame set, but it has a non-integrated seat post, and it also uses a slightly heavier and slightly cheaper grade of carbon fiber. As mentioned, this is my long-term test bike, so I'll be getting plenty of hours in on it over the next year. I'll be doing a series of updates talking about what parts I like, what parts I perhaps didn't like so much, what changes I've made, and you'll be able to see all of that on bikeradar.com. And later on in the year, I'll be doing another video that gives you a much more detailed review of this bike, so stay tuned for that. Before I get into the nitty gritty, I'd like to say a big thank you to Freewheel for providing us with kit for this video. If you like the look of anything you see, you can head to Freewheel by following the link in the description. I've gone for this bike because I'm still a roadie at heart. Gravel is undoubtedly having a real moment right now, but I still do practically all of my riding on the road. I love doing group rides, long climbs, fast ascents, and basically pretending I'm in the tour. I also have a lot of experience with the Giant TCR, having owned a 2009 Advanced SL model for the past six years. I'm hoping this new bike, however, will allow me to ride faster, more comfortably, and over more varied terrain than ever before. Changes to the TCR over the years have tended to be fairly incremental, but 2021 sees a slightly bigger shift. As with the advanced SL models, the advanced Pro range gets some big upgrades in terms of improved aerodynamics and much greater tire clearance. Tube shapes have been updated across the board to increase their aerodynamic efficiency. All of the tubes are now what Giant calls truncated ellipse shapes, which is essentially like the cam tail tube shapes you see on other lightweight aerodynamic road bikes. The idea is that by chopping off the back section of a full aerofoil, you maintain some of the aerodynamic benefits, but in a shape that fits within UCI regulations and also maintains stiffness to weight ratios that we all like. The official tire clearance is also now up to 32 millimeters, up from 28 millimeters on the 2020 models. Now, four millimeters might not sound like a huge amount, but it's actually quite large in terms of tires. And changing your tires is one of the biggest ways to improve or just change the performance of your bike. So I'm really happy to have it. That's kind of it for big changes, but there are of course more incremental changes as well. They've updated the headset spaces so they're now slightly more integrated than before and they've also changed the cable routing at the front. Beyond that, Giant has also made some slight changes to the geometry for the 2021 models. It's not a complete overhaul, but the changes are noticeable when you look at them on the geometry charts. On this particular model, which is a size medium slash large, Giant has decreased the reach by five millimeters, but that isn't the case across the entire range. Instead, Giant has tweaked the stack and reach figures so that they're more consistently both higher and longer across the range than before. There haven't been massive changes to the head tube or seat tube angles, but at 73 degrees parallel on this size medium large, it does make it slightly slacker than something like the Specialized Tarmac. Trail and bottom bracket drop has also increased very slightly versus the previous year's model, and this is to account mainly for the slightly larger tires that are gonna be used. Lastly, the wheelbase has increased by about six millimeters on this size medium large versus the 2020 model. This should lead to a slightly more stable bike at high speed. Interestingly, this change comes mostly at the front of the bike, which means the chain stays remain quite short and should provide that same snappy pedaling response that you're used to with a TCR. Overall, these changes point to a bike that's slightly less aggressive and should be a little more stable at higher speeds than the previous year's models. How does this translate into the real world though? Well, I'll give you my ride impressions later on in the video. The bike is specced with a full Shimano 105 R7000 group set with 52 36 chain rings up front and an 1130 cassette out the back. Other than the gearing and the brakes though, everything else is from Giant. So that's the wheels, the handlebars, the stem, the saddle, the seat post, the tires, everything. And in terms of how much it costs, it costs 2,999 pounds or 3,100 euros. Some people might sniff at 105 on a 3,000 pound road bike, but I think it's quite a smart choice from Giant 
because they spec'd a slightly cheaper group set so that they can give you the higher end wheel set found on the top of the range models. The new SLR1 carbon wheels are 42 millimeters deep and are based around the Kdex design, Kdex being Giant's premium sister brand. And they're both wider internally and externally at 19 millimeters and around 24 and a half millimeters respectively. As you'd expect, the rims are tubeless ready, but they're also hookless. And while those whip figures don't make them the most progressive wheels on the market, Giant does say that they're also 129 grams lighter than the previous generation and that the bearings have 69% less drag than the baseline DT Swiss 240 hub. How much difference does that weight reduction and reduction in bearing drag make? Well, I'm not so sure, but the wheels certainly look nice. Thankfully, Giant ships the bike with the tires already set up tubeless with sealant added. And this is great because it really takes out any hassle of doing it yourself at home. The tires are Giant's Gavia Course 1 tubeless road tires. They have a 60 threads per inch casing with a slick central tread and a kind of file tread on the outside. They're sort of Giant's second tier road racing tire. They're stamped as 25 millimeters in width, but on these rims, they actually measure up more like a 27, 28 millimeter tire at your kind of standard riding pressures of around 60 to 70 PSI. Enough of me talking about the spec of the bike though, what you really wanna know is how it rides. I think the most immediately noticeable thing about how it rides is how smooth and confident it is. I think this is largely helped in part by the tubeless wheels and tires. Being able to run slightly lower pressures without the risk of pinch flatting really helps in this regard. The other noticeable thing, and this is very much particular to me, is that the front end on this bike is almost comically wide and short. I tend to run very narrow handlebars and quite a long stem, so the 42 centimetre bars and the 110 millimetre stem on this bike feels very short and very wide. This won't be the case for everyone, of course, but for someone who's very thin like me and quite concerned with aerodynamics, running a longer, narrower setup is something that I've really learned to love over the past few years. And the wide, short setup on this feels quite twitchy. Pedaling stiffness feels great. Obviously, for someone who weighs 65 kilos and has a max power output of less than 1,000 watts, I don't really stress that on a bike, but it feels perfectly adequate when you're climbing. As mentioned, the tires have a 60 TPI casing, so I think there could be potentially room to upgrade there as there may be faster options on the market with a higher thread count, a more supple ride feel, and less rolling resistance. I haven't been immediately enamored with the new saddle. It's by no means uncomfortable, but it's slightly flatter and more padded than I'm used to, and I haven't quite been able to find the right spot to sit on it just yet. Whether or not this is a long-term thing, or if it's something I could just get used to, remains to be seen, but you'll have to wait for my next update to find out that. In terms of the aero improvements, well, it's really hard to say whether you can feel those. You can really feel it on windy days when sometimes the wind occasionally catches your front wheel, but other than that, it doesn't feel like a sort of super bike with 80 mil deep wheels when you're just riding along. Now, of course, I do believe in physics, and I don't doubt that the redesigned tube shapes and the wheels are more aero than they were previously, as Giant claims, but these things are really hard to detect unless you've got the kind of equipment that the professionals use. Regardless of whether you can really feel those aero differences though, it's still nice to have them because they don't really come at a cost in terms of weight or stiffness, and at the end of a long day, those small changes do still add up. Overall then, it would be easy to argue that it isn't the most exciting bike on the market, but it does do everything you could ask of a road bike very competently. The build is great, and in my experience, the new 105 works just as well as the slightly more expensive group sets. It just gives up a little bit of weight. And that brings us quite conveniently to the overall weight, because despite the slightly heavier 105 group set, it actually only weighs 7.87 kilos, which is very competitive. So that's my giant TCR Advanced Pro 2 disc. I've got a few ideas for things I might upgrade, but what do you think I should upgrade? And what do you think about the weight? 
I don't really think weight's that important, but I know a lot of people really care about it. So let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that little bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you get a notification.